Right, so we're going to be moving on to a little bit more of a complex one. Now it's complex as in drawing is a little bit more complex. The colours are actually pretty simple. You can see here I've limited down to, I don't know, one, two, three, five, six, if you include white as a colour, six, two, four, five colours, roughly. Red, yellow, orange and green, with a little bit of white, some black. Let you go. Now, first of all, we're looking at getting a circle in for this. So you can see a circle there. Then we're going to put arms coming out from that circle to roughly plot where our petal formations lay. Then we're going to bulk up each petal shape. Um, then work in here in the same similar kind of way. And then we got to do the actual hard work. Well, that is probably the hard work. The colouring in is the easy work in this type of project. So. Without much ado, before we run out of time, let's get it in. I've got light blue, well, a sky blue pastel paper to work on. A beautiful reference image by Yolan Knight Coppens. Beautiful here, check it out on Pexel's link. I've got a white pastel pencil, a black charcoal pencil, a set of colours, well, pastel pencils that I thought were appropriate that I had from my collection for the reference image. I've got my Conte crayons over here, which is my general collection. I'm going to take bits and pieces out of, generally a lot of red and orange and yellows. Um, for the end, just like I did last time, I've got some really soft unisons to give some whack of colour here and there. So let's get on because, you know, I've seen enough videos that everyone's chatting all the time and personally it drives me a little bored out of my mind. I just want them to get on with things. Oh, let's get that circle down at the centre. Then we've got a petal coming down here, we've got a petal coming down here, that petal might need to shimmy over because I'm just looking at the spacing of those petals. Then we've got the petal coming over here, there's like a little sun giving off a beacon of petal um, positions. Now look at that, if you think here that you've got a horizontal line that should give you a rough idea of how sharp that angle is and that to me says it needs to be sharper than I have it. So I'm going to put that in there. Now because I'm going to change that, I'm going to use my putty rubber just to take out that line so that I don't make a mistake when I'm coming to it later on. This one, this one, this one, that one, this one, this big one. Then I've got that one, that one. Then I've got a little cluster over here, a little cluster here, and I've got one, that one sitting there, and I'm going to have one sitting on top of that, like I said before, I thought I'd go to draft that over, it looked a bit too big, so I'm going to pull that over, and like I said before, if you are making marks that have to be precise, make sure you're rubbing out your errors, or you're going to end up with serious problems. So, I've got like a sunshine. Then I'm going to look at putting in that centre. Now be careful about putting in the centre because there's a lot less space up here than there is down here. So it should be higher up. It's not slap bang in the middle. It's towards the top. Okay. And from that, I'm going to have all these petals. Now because it's a ball, these petals are curving around. So can you see that bowing line that I'm marking in to give me a guide of the direction the petals need to be taking? It does look like some weird futuristic drawing at this time point, but you know, it should all pan out as we go along. Now let's get these petal shapes in. We're still working in the whole kind of less is more. So let's get some rough shapes and we're looking at kind of how the petals are sitting together, how big a petal is, and the approximate shape and position of that petal is to one another. A lot of the time it's easier to get the bigger petals in and then put these smaller petals on top. Kind of just holding the pencil loosely. I've got that one coming in here. There's that one kind of, that's a tube coming over here. Then I've got this arc petal coming in over there. Again, this one's coming over towards the right. I got one coming up and pointing out. Then that's a smaller one over and that one over here. Now the whole point of this is that you're getting the drawing down in a very simple holistic way without investing too much time and effort into it because it's most likely at this early stage 
that you're going to be going wrong and that it's high risk drawing. Not in the kind of um, bungee jumping of a bridge high risk drawing, but high risk as in mistakes are going to happen. There's no point in investing a load of time and effort. Just look at getting the bare bones correct and then use that to make sure that the next decision you're making, because that's what drawing is all about, is making lots of sometimes complex decisions um, is correct. So immediately you can hopefully start seeing a flower come. Now that I've got that, then I'm going to use my pencil and this is when you want a spare piece of paper just to lean your hand on. Uh, Can, I don't smudge all my drawing. Now I'm going to get the shape a little bit more refined. Um, if you like detail, this is kind of when you you know you get into your element. If you hate detail, this is going to be painful. And you want to look at kind of making it a lot simpler than it actually is. If you hate detail, there is no point in sitting here going through painstakingly drawing and counting all these little petals and I mean it's I, I have students and I've done before where I've drawn things just like this and I've had to sit there and actually count out individual petals to make sure that I've got the correct placing of each one um, it's not worth doing that if you hate it just keep it loose sketch them in and do approximations don't worry too much as long as they're going around the flower, it'll all work out, to be quite honest. No one's going to have a, absolutely a clue that you've got, I don't know, five petals when there should be three. It's not going to be a problem. And you can see here, I'm just doing approximations at this moment of time because I know I'm up against the clock and I want to keep this really relatively simple for you. Right, so you can see there, I've got that playing out as a very simplistic version. Now I need to start getting these petals in. And again, what you would do if you want it to be accurate is you'd look at the size of that petal in relationship to the bud. You might say that petal is about a third of the height of this bud. And therefore that will give you the position of how big that petal should be in relationship to that bud. And then you can work out the overall size of everything else. But, or, but she says, you can just have fun and draw, you know, don't worry about really being accurate with it, you know, if you enjoy the drawing process, you're going to do it more, which means you'll get better, which is part of the whole key of drawing, is practice ultimately. So I've taken off my rough sketching lines and I'm going to put in some Conte crayons. Now, these do not have to be Conte crayons that you're using, it's just that they're a harder soft pastel on the market, so it's easier to work hard to soft, okay? The more expensive, the Rembrandts and Sennelia um, and Unison are much softer on that level, so look at how hard they are. And by this I mean you literally get one in your finger use your nail and scrape into it. Now if it takes a bit more harder pressure then that's a harder um, soft pastel. Should I just rewind that back again? If it takes a lot more downward pressure to get a dust off which has a decent colour to it because uh, there's cheap ones on the market that are hard pastels but they don't give you much pigment then you know that that's a harder soft pastel and that you start off with that. If you do that for instance of the unisons, you don't need much pressure for a lot of dust to come off them because of the expensive brand. The pastel pencils are going to be the harder ones to keep the, the strength because it's a much more smaller piece of pastel so I have to add the binder to keep the strength um, or it'll just keep smashing every time you draw with it. I am so going off on a random 
point of call now. Now let's get this down first. I'm going to put this orange in. So I'm thinking like, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's get some orangey yellow in. And I'm holding it on the side so that I can plot that in as a base layer to then work up and get a little bit more accuracy. But I got a basic lay down of shade there. Then I'm going to go in for some red. Um, which red? She says, kind of like a red. That's a little bit more pinkier red than I'd expect. And I'm going to have to hold it on its side because it's just too fiddly and small the areas for the red. Now that pretty much shows you how with pastels going into a bigger scale to work on makes life a lot easier small it's really difficult to lay the pastel in unless you're using the pastel pencils which are very labour intense. Now sticks will give you a lot more colour quite quickly. The colour is also a little bit more um, stronger with the sticks. And I'm going to grab a little bit more of a brighter yellow at the centre. That gives it a bit of a kick, doesn't it? Right, so now I've got that. I'm going to work a combination of the pencils and the Conte sticks. Uh, let's get the creams and the yellows. Okay. And start working up one pastel at a time. One pastel, one petal at a time. <laughs> I don't know. Can't say What are you talking about half the time? Expand out that yellow and work in a bit of cream. A lot like a, a white, quite good. The light colours are smoothing out those other shades. To, I could get my white pastel pencil, add a little bit more highlight in a few places where it's folded and the light's hitting it a little bit more. With your pastel pencils it's wise to try and go a direction of the veins within the pastel accurate representation as it follows the contours of the petal. Now you can see it's got like these red veins. Let's take a red. I'll throw that in there. It's also got a little bit of red on the tips. orange for any shadow so I might end up with a little bit of red and a little bit of orange and just doing our throwing to really exaggerate the shadow on each petal so that it stands out from one another. Now this is when it kind of gets into a whole labour of love because you can see that you've got to do that for each petal. So I hope you've got patience and I'll see you in a moment. Right, so we've got the main petals laid down around the edge of the flower um, and you can see here that it's radically changed. Now I've got to build up this centre and it's the same process whereby you're layering up those, those main colours that you've used. So a lot of the time I'm using the charcoal pencil, and um, the charcoal, the pastel pencils 
because it's in a smaller confined space it's therefore easy to control that and layering them up working light to dark just as I did with the, pen, um, the main past the main petals now what you might find is that you can see areas where it's getting quite dark so you could take um, a, a very dark red if you have that you could take a purple or you could take a black if you wanted to. So if I take a charcoal black pencil here and I can start just exaggerating the areas of darker shade in a few parts where the petals kind of come into one another and create shadows. Now because it's a charcoal pencil I can have it to quite a fine point and I can start drafting in a lot more crisper edge details which can make the drawing appear more realistic and a little bit more fine tuned. I can also take a little bit of the black if I wanted to and then work the red into it so that the black cross contaminates the red and becomes a little bit more of a tonal mark rather than a linear form. So if you're finding that the black is too harsh you can always do that and that'll just work it out into the flower. Let's just start building up these sections now. Right, so there you go, the main bulk of the flower is done. We're just going to put in some background. You can see there's some red and some greens. So this is when it comes in handy using the sticks because I can just put that side of the pastel down onto the surface uh, and get some colour fairly quickly, which is gently applied. Bring that down up there. Now it should be a little bit pinkier, so let's add a little bit of white. Make it a bit more patchy in tone. Right, then you can start putting in your really soft pastels give yourself a really good hit of strong pigment here and there throughout the picture. Work them into that harder layer that you've been building up. Don't overwork it or you'll lose all the detail. They're just odd bits of strong colour. And there you go, you've got your basic flower, which is a lovely little quick study to do. Um, this one's a little bit longer than the first one, obviously because you've got so many petals, but a lot of it's repeating and training you to blend colours on the surface using the pastels and building up knowledge of how soft or hard to get different effects. Hope you've had fun and um, it's your turn to have a go. See you later. Bye everyone.